For the first time in more than half a century, US Congress has held a public hearing on unidentified flying objects. Recently, NASA has made a shocking discovery identifying mysterious objects in the Orion Nebula in space. When it comes to studying the Milky Way, Orion is one of the most famous and well-known documented constellations. With its nearest stars located just a few hundred light years from Earth, the constellation is home to some of the largest and brightest stars in the sky, including the infamous red star Betelgeuse, as well as a healthy nursery of blazing young stars that are ready to be studied. Now, with the help of the cutting-edge James Webb Space Telescope, scientists have captured Orion in its greatest detail and accuracy ever. However, a dark cylindrical object was spotted in the Orion Nebula by astronomers using NASA's Hubble Space Telescope. So, what could this be? Just how big is this thing exactly? Come along as we take a look at NASA's discovery of the massive object passing through the Orion Nebula. So, without any further delay, let's jump right into the video. The Orion Nebula When a star dies, it leaves behind a nebula, a cloud of dust and gas that can be found in the sky. It's possible to find both star-forming and star-death regions. This latter type is what we know as the Orion Nebula. The Orion Nebula is the closest and one of the brightest nebula visible from Earth, located only 1,344 light-years away. This means it can be seen without optical aid up until about the middle of March under clear, dark skies. Finding the Orion Nebula A logarithmic scale is used to measure how bright things look in the night sky, as seen from Earth. The lower the number, the brighter the object. With this scale, an object with a magnitude of 1 is 10 times brighter than an object with a magnitude of 2. The magnitude of the Sun is negative 26, while the magnitude of Sirius, the brightest star in the night sky, is negative 1.46. The Orion Nebula has a magnitude of 4, which means that it is not very bright. To really see it, you'll need to go somewhere dark and let your eyes adjust. Choose a night when there is no moonlight like when the moon is new. The Orion Nebula is easy to find because it is in the constellation Orion, which is one of the easiest to spot. In February and early March, Orion will be in the eastern sky when the sun goes down. It will move south in the northern hemisphere and set in the west early in the morning. In the southern hemisphere, you can see Orion in the north, which is the opposite of how it looks in the north. Mysterious Object in Orion Nebula while taking measurements of the M42 Orion Nebula, an astronomer noticed a mysterious cylinder in the images. A single frame was taken showing the mysterious object. In the constellation Orion, one of the brightest nebula is located, M42 Orion. The astronomer used an 8-inch astrograph Newtonian telescope to take the picture. He was shocked to observe more of these anomalous things as he took further photographs of the nebula. When analyzed frame by frame, these mysterious things appear to be in transit. It seems that the action is progressing from left to right. This is not the first time and it will not be the last time that I search the night skies for galaxies, nebula, and the truth that is out there. The astronomer said, MUFON has been notified about this UFO sighting, the Mutual UFO Network. Observations of cigar-shaped objects by astronomers and UFOlogists are not new. A similar object which proved out to be the first interstellar asteroid had previously been identified by scientists. Oumuamua, the name given to the about 400-meter-long stony object has a reddish hue. For some researchers, Oumuamua's journey through interstellar space and the solar system is proof that it was ejected from a distant star system. Some researchers hypothesized that a very minor emission of gas from its surface, typical of a comet, caused it to divert slightly from a path that could be explained only by the sun's gravitational force, albeit any such emission was so low as to be undetected. Unlike comets, it didn't have a dust tail or gas jets. According to the authors of the study, the most basic explanation for Oumuamua is that it is a planetesimal. A planetesimal is a planetary building block or fragment generated in a distant star system. Whether it is made entirely of rock or also contains metal or other components is still unknown. It has already sped past Saturn and is on its way out of our solar system. Recent supernova produced giant cavities in the Orion Nebula. The Orion Nebula is an iconic part of the night sky that can be viewed via even modest home telescopes. It's a bustling galaxy in Orion. Stars are being formed and other phenomena are taking place at an unprecedented rate in this area. Planets forming in protoplanetary disks, stars beginning their lives of fusion inside collapsing molecular clouds, 
and the photo-evaporative power of enormous hot stars, carving out apertures in clouds of interstellar gas, have all been witnessed in this one of the sky's most examined structures. The Orion Nebula, however, is not immune to the effects of supernova explosions. Recent studies suggest that the unexplained sky feature originally recognized at the end of the 19th century is the result of supernova explosions in modern astronomical history. Bernard's Loop is a massive 300 light year wide arc of hot gas. Bernard's Loop American astronomer and astrophotographer E. E. Bernard published his findings about the constellation Orion in the journal Popular Astronomy in 1894. Interestingly, he was trying out his ideas using the lens from a cheap oil projecting lantern, his words, at the Lick Observatory. His findings were detailed in the article he wrote. Since the nebulosity is so faint at the moment, I only depicted it with dots on my sketch, which spans from one degree to two degrees east of Tau. In addition, he said, it shines best between the stars 56 and 60, Orionis. Since the development of more sophisticated observational techniques and a deeper understanding of the natural world in general, astronomers have gained a deeper appreciation for Bernard's loop. Emission nebulas are known to be composed of ionized gases. Different gases produce light at different wavelengths, with alpha hydrogen red light being the most prevalent. The ionization of the gases and their emissions are known to be powered by the surrounding stars in the Orion Nebula. The origin of the gas eddy loop has been a point of debate among astronomers. There was probably a supernova explosion. This is supported by a new paper which claims that within the previous 4 million years, at least one supernova shaped the area. One can find the paper titled, A 3D View of Orion 1, Bernard's Loop, on the internet. The birth of new stars at the cavity's rims is another piece of evidence suggesting that Bernard's Loop is not empty. Shockwaves from a supernova are so strong that they can compress gas, causing stars to develop. The findings they report can't be taken at face value. Supernova are responsible for carving out other bubbles in the interstellar medium and triggering widespread star formation, as shown by other studies, including those conducted by the same team in the past. It is the case for the gas shell that surrounds the molecular clouds in Perseus and Taurus, known as the Pertau shell. According to co-author Alyssa Goodman, the more astronomers use high-quality data like that provided by Gaia, the more of these gas bubbles with prominent star formation on their edges will be discovered. Presence of Colorful Celestial Cloudscape The colorful area around the Herbig Harrow object HH505 is shown in this image of the cosmos from the NASA ESA Hubble Space Telescope. Herbig Harrow objects, the bright regions surrounding young stars, are created when shockwaves created by the collision of fast-moving gas and dust with stellar winds or jets of gas blasting from these stars. These outflows in HH505 come from the star 9 Ori, which is located on the edge of the Orion Nebula, roughly 1,000 light-years from Earth. Outflows can be seen as swooping structures at the top and bottom of the image, interacting with the massive outflow of gas and dust from the Orion Nebula's core distorts them into sinuous curves. These images were taken by astronomers investigating the characteristics of outflows and protoplanetary disks using Hubble's advanced camera for surveys. Intense ultraviolet light from brilliant young stars fills the Orion Nebula. Hubble can clearly see the shockwaves created by the outflows, but this radiation also highlights the currents of star material flowing at slower speeds. This gives astronomers a unique opportunity to study the structure of jets and outflows firsthand. Information about Orion's star formation The Orion Nebula is only 1,500 light-years away, making it an ideal laboratory to investigate the process of star formation. This is a relatively low distance considering the 100,000 light-year diameter of our galaxy. Massive stars at the nebula's center have blown out most of the dust and gas in which they formed, carving a cavity in the dark cloud, giving astronomers a clear view into this crowded stellar maternity ward. In this stellar soup, we can trace the entire timeline of Orion's star formation through the nebula arcs, blobs, pillars, and cigar-shaped dust rings. The ejected material from other stars and the stellar environment are both affected by the stellar winds from young stars and each feature tells a different part of that story. It was in one of these clouds that our sun was likely born four and a half billion years ago. That pretty much wraps this video up, guys. 
Thanks for watching. What do you think about this mysterious object in the Orion Nebula? Share with us in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to this channel with a bell notification if you enjoy watching our content. We upload some awesome stuff here which you will most certainly enjoy. Hit a like on this video and leave a comment below. See you guys in the next one.